As we have been learning hypothesis testing, you've heard me go on at length about statistically significant differences. And we determined that a result is statistically significant if we calculate a p-value less than 0.05. But what does that actually mean? What does p less than 0.05 really tell us? Let me give you a quick quiz to see if you can figure it out. When we calculate a probability less than 0.05, does that mean that there is a 95% chance that the alternative hypothesis is true? Or does it mean that there's a 95% chance that the null hypothesis was false? Or does it mean that if the study was repeated, the null hypothesis would be rejected 95 times out of 100. Does that probability less than 0.05 tell us any of these things? Nope. No, it does not. And the reason why it doesn't tell us is because what we think that we're getting with hypothesis testing and what we are actually getting with hypothesis testing are often two different things. Jacob Cohen wrote about this in an article titled The Earth is Round, P less than 0.05, in which he pointed out that when we do statistical hypothesis inference testing, what we want is the probability that the alternative hypothesis is true given the evidence. Looking at the difference between this sample mean and that population mean, how likely is it that our treatment worked? That this education was effective? That's what we want. But what we are getting is the probability of this evidence, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. If there really was no difference between the sample mean and the population mean, if that mean difference was truly zero, how likely is it that we would have gotten a sample mean this far away from the population mean? It's highly unlikely. Less than five times in a hundred would that occur by chance, if the null hypothesis was true. And here's the problem. The null hypothesis is never true. The null hypothesis tells us that there is no difference between the sample mean and the population mean. And yet, when we do a treatment, that treatment always does something, even if it's minimal. Whenever we measure two means, the sample mean and the population mean are never truly equal. And what P less than 0.05 is really telling us is that any time we make a decision based on that probability, 5% of the time, it's going to be a mistake. We will make an error in five out of 100 conclusions about the data. And in addition to all of that, significance can be driven by sample size. If you have a data set with two groups, the means of which are not statistically significant, you could copy and paste those values and paste them below, and then copy and paste again and again. And if you copied and pasted enough, if you just duplicated the same non-significant data enough, eventually you could get a P less than 0.05 driven solely by sample size. And let me hasten to add, don't do this. That is not ethical research. The point is that sample size can drive statistical significance. If you have a large enough sample size, you will find statistical significance, but that significance doesn't tell us what we really want to know. Here is what statistical significance, P less than 0.05, actually tells us. P less than 0.05 means that the results were different, they were significantly different. In fact, they were statistically significantly different, but not whether the results 
are practically significant. Yes, this intervention had a tiny effect on a small number of students. It was a real effect, but if we think about how much money we're spending on this education program, the costs are just not worth the benefits. But that information is not going to come from a significance value. A p-value less than 0.05 tells us that the treatment had some effect, but it doesn't tell us how large the effect was. A statistically significant finding tells us that the null hypothesis should be rejected, but it does not prove that the alternative hypothesis is correct or that the null hypothesis was false because we already know that the null hypothesis is false. We are getting very limited information from statistical significance. Really, all that we are learning is that this p-value is the probability of finding these results if the null hypothesis is true, which we know that it is not. Statistically significant simply means that only 5% of the time would we have found the outcome that we did find purely by chance. Therefore, differences that we have found are unlikely to have occurred by chance. But then again, they could be due to chance, or maybe they're due to having a large sample size, or even if these differences are statistically significant, they really may not matter to us in the real world. They may have no practical significance. Therefore, anytime we calculate a p-value to talk about the statistical significance, we should also calculate an effect size as a measure of practical significance. And we're going to talk about effect sizes next.